cellular immunity response involves specifically the T cells. And T cells, they provide a defense against intracellular antigens. So they have the option of directly killing body cells. And this can be uh, those that are infected by viruses or bacteria, for example, cancerous cells, abnormal cells, or maybe other foreign cells, for example, transplanted cells. So the T cells themselves and how they develop is much more complex than B cells. So, um, there, and there's two groups of T cells. There are what we refer to as CD4 cells, and those specifically usually become helper T cells. And by helper, they can activate B cells. They can also activate T cells and macrophages as well. So it kind of helps if you think of them as like the directors. Some also can become the regulatory T cells. And the regulatory T cells are going to moderate the immune response. And these can also become the memory T cells. So remember that memory is a ma an important classification characteristic of the adaptive immune response. So that can occur for both B and T cells. Now CD8 cells, they can become cytotoxic cells. And these cytotoxic cells are capable of directly destroying the cells. And again, they also can become memory T cells also. So the helper cytotoxic and T cells are all activated T cells. When they're referred to as CD4, CD8, they are naive at this point. They have not yet encountered an antigen and kind of shown what they can do. So uh, let's look at how these cells develop, how they differentiate. So beginning with an immature lymphocyte in the bone marrow, that lymphocyte can either become a CD4 cell, which we see right here on the left, or a CD8 cell. And remember that that maturation is what occurs in the thymus. So those cells then can become one of two, go on one of two pathways. And once they're activated, uh, there is a, an MHC protein that's displayed by the antigen. All the MHC is is basically a protein code in the membrane that identifies an antigen, for example. And we have these MHCs on all of our cells. So in this case, there's an antigen presenting cell. The most common one is the dendritic cell that's presenting or displaying this antigen. So now the cell is activated. As this occurs, the CD4 becomes either the helper T cell or the regulatory T cell. And it also has the option to remember what that antigen first looked like, and that would be a memory cell. And you can see that there's a crossover here between the CD4 and CD8, so they can both be memory cells, memory T cells. So over here on the right now, again, there's an MHC protein that's displayed by the antigen. So this antigen presenting cell, the dendritic cell, is displaying this antigen to the lymphocyte, and now it's activated. It's no longer naive. And then it be develops into a CD8, which is a cytotoxic T cell. So those are the different types of T cells. So these next few slides just kind of summarize that. The cytotoxic T cell is known for directly attacking and killing other cells. It can circulate throughout the blood and the lymph. And the, big, the main cells that it kills are virus-infected cells, cells with intracellular bacteria, parasites, cancer cells. So the cytotoxic kind of works like the natural killer cells did with the perforins. So just creating pores in the target cell to destroy it. So this um, slide is now showing the um, 
it's showing this in process. So it's showing the cytotoxic T cells as they're affecting cancerous cells. So in this case, we see that the T cell identifies foreign antigens, kind of what we looked at just previously, binds tightly to the target cell. The cytotoxic T cell, that's what the T with the little C means, releases the perforin, kind of like the natural killer cells did. But this is the adaptive immune response now, so it's much, much more antigen specific. The natural killer cell didn't have anything to do with the antigen at all. So the perforin molecules insert into the membrane and cause these holes for the cell then basically to burst. So that's what the cytotoxic T cell does. And then eventually, once it's destroyed its prey, it's going to detach and search for more prey after that. So additional roles, uh, cytotoxic T cell, I mentioned the natural killer cell. It works kind of like that. And um, so it can also bring natural killer cells into the picture. Then the next type is the regulatory T cell. And that's going to be the kind of the conductor. And there are special chemicals involved, cytokines. And you don't need to know the different cytokines or interleukins. But basically, other yeah, chemicals are going to be important here to prevent an autoimmune response. So an autoimmune response is going to be very bad where the body's own immune system basically attacks it. So for this is very important, especially for organ transplants and to prevent um, organ rejection, for example. So the uh, most common type of organ transplant is an allograft, a transplant from the same species, so human transplant. So if, if, if you give a kidney to your family member, that would be an example of an allograft. Other types of grafts could be from other species. So you've heard of uh, a pig valve possibly going into a heart, for example. So the success of this organ transplant, it all depends on these, the immune system and whether it chooses to reject or accept that tissue. So the success depends on the blood type, also depends on the blood antigens, and the MHC antigens, those are basically the self-antigens. Again, it's, think of them as just flags that identify our cells. They need, hopefully are going to match as soon as, as quick, closely as possible. So after surgery, the first thing that happens is patients are on immunosuppressive therapy to try to suppress the immune system in hopes that it doesn't reject that tissue. But um, eventually, sometimes that does happen, unfortunately. So an immunodeficiency now, you've all heard of an immunodeficiency before. Um, it could be a, so a person having a weaker immune system. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, AIDS or HIV. So an immunodeficiency is a congenital or acquired condition that impairs the function or the production of the immune cells or the molecules. So severe combined immunodeficiency syndrome is a genetic syndrome. Um, Hodgkin's disease would be an example of an acquired immunodeficiency causes cancer of B cells. So the one that you've heard of the most is first of all HIV and the way HIV works is it cripples the immune system and it's a virus that can lead to an infection so it makes the body much more susceptible now to an infection. And so those in infections could be um, Awful things like uh, pneumonia could end up killing the person, um, or Kaposi sarcoma. These look like um, I, you can describe them kind of as uh, swollen leeches that are all over the body. 
This is one of the things that uh, Freddie Mercury had before he died. He had sarcomas everywhere, all over his body on the surface. And so it could lead to AIDS. So technically, they're not the same thing. AIDS is a condition that develops when there's serious damage to the immune system. And it's important to remember that HIV specifically works by destroying the T helper cells.